welcome again to a look across the Chinese art scene, one that remains ever-changing and multi-dimensional. This here is your chance to learn about art news, art events, and everything else that's going on in China's booming art scene. I'm your host, Shina Akagawa, and this is China Arts. Coming up on today's show, the 14th Asia Arts Festival officially kicked off in the city of Quanzhou. The event featured puppet troops from all over the world. Award-winning director Jia Ka Jing premiered his latest film, Mountains May Depart, and American fashion magazine Vogue has captured the ever-changing fashion style and society in China. All that and more right here on China Arts. First up, let's get the inside scoop on some exciting art news going on here in China. The 14th Asia Arts Festival officially kicked off in the city of Quanzhou. Artists from over 30 countries have converged in the city to put on a dazzling lineup of exhibitions, shows, and seminars. Among them is the Quanzhou International Puppet Festival. Quanzhou is one of the most famous historical and cultural cities in China. It was formerly China's marine door to exotic cultures and the starting point of the ancient Silk Road, making Quanzhou a fitting host for this year's 14th Asia Arts Festival. Dozens of art forms are on display at the festival, including puppetry. Puppetry has a history of over a thousand years in Quanzhou. This year's event featured puppet troops from all over the world. From lion dances, horses, to sea animals, puppeteers are bringing to life all kinds of imaginary scenes using puppets. It's an art form that transcends language barriers, uniting artists and audience members alike. Among the performers was the German duo, The Fifth Wheel. The pair presented a show of singing gypsies. The pair have worked together for nearly 20 years, traveling to various countries to put on shows. The performance was followed by Quanzhou's puppet troupe, who presented a program entitled Cheerful Festival. Also to perform was Taiwan's Chu Lu Shan puppet troupe. All these performances were part of the fourth China Quanzhou International Puppet Festival. As one of the key sections of this year's Asia Arts Festival, the event featured a total of 25 troops from 14 different countries. Movie fans and critics alike have been eagerly waiting for the premiere of the film Mountains May Depart. The film, directed by none other than renowned director Jia Jiangke, is set to explore issues of family and traditions against the face of China's growing materialism. Let's find out more. Mountains May Depart, the highly anticipated film by award-winning director Jia Jiangke, has finally opened in Beijing. Jia, who was the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award at the Cannes Film Festival, has received international critical praise. Mountains May Depart is Jia's eighth feature film. It follows the 2016 Still Life, which won a Golden Lion Award in Venice, and the 2013 A Touch of Sin, which won Best Screenplay at the Cannes Film Festival. Mountains May Depart was partially shot in Jia's hometown, Fengyang, a small city in China's northern Shanxi province. Other parts were shot in Australia. The film explores a story among three close friends that took place in three different time periods. The film hits a rather melancholy note, addressing themes of alienation and darkness in a 21st century society. It's an intensely moving study of how China's economic boom and the cultural materialism it has spawned has affected the bonds of family, love, and tradition. Moving on from films to paintings, the China Guardian Auctions House is set to hold a night sale. The event will feature a wide collection of Chinese ink paintings, all of which are expected to sell at very high prices. Let's check it out. A number of high-quality and rarely seen paintings by Chinese ink masters are set to go under the hammer in Beijing. The highly anticipated night sale, hosted by China Guardian Auctions, will feature a collection of classical Chinese paintings. The event entitled the Grand View Sale is widely seen as a barometer of the category's market performance. 
The upcoming sale will feature two works by artist Pan Tian Sho, Pine Trees, and The Morning Glow. The painting Pine Tree was inspired by a poem written by Mao Zedong, while the latter is representative of Pan's interpretation of traditional ink art. Another highlight is Li Keren's Thousands of Hills in Chrism Zoo. Fu Baoxi's Duke Zhang of Zheng Xing, his mother, is also expected to be auctioned at a high price. This piece has rarely been seen on the market. And now for our spotlight story. As a front runner in the world of fashion, Vogue magazine has always been ahead of the pack. American Vogue has visited China during three different occasions to capture the ever-changing fashion style and society of this ancient country. American Vogue has taken photographs in China three times, first in August of 1979, followed by December of 1993, and most recently September of 2011. Each shooting has a special meaning and the photographs demonstrate the ever-changing spirit of China. Which year of Chinese fashion do you like the best? The first shooting in China of American Vogue was in 1979, when America and China officially established a diplomatic relationship. Thus, the shooting had a clear sign of the era. This was a key time for Vogue to capture the fashion of China. In 1979, Vogue chose Nancy Kissinger, wife of U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, as the focus of the shoot. Vogue made the choice not only because it met the topic of the time, but also because Nancy was known to have a great sense of style. At the time, most Chinese people wore dark colored and old fashioned clothes, such as gray and black clothes. The appearance of Nancy in a colorful coat created a strong contrast and added spice to the figures in the picture. The picture also includes young children in colorful clothing. Nancy visited the Forbidden City wearing a gray set and carrying a black handbag. The simple matching is still fashionable today. Her collection of color fits the seriousness of the Forbidden City. Nancy visited a temple in Hangzhou. Her dark red fur coat formed a delightful contrast with the color of the temple, making her standing out from the people in faint blue colors. Here she is wearing a burgundy corduroy leisure jacket and a tight dress. Her matching of clothes and selection of color still confirms the style of the time. Nancy in a brown suit with a high waist lace belt. She is waving her head and turning her back, which is similar to the movements of the people practicing Tai Chi on the square. In 1993, Vogue took photographs of the supermodel Linda Evangelista in China. Different from the political perspective in 1979, the perspective during this time was more lively and fitted the ever-changing image of the model. It was possibly one of the best photos representing the social custom in China during the time. Linda stands out from the passing bicycles. Her matching of white turtleneck sweater with a long silk dress is still trendy today. Linda joins a morning exercise on the square in a smart white tennis pleated skirt matching the crowd as seen from a distance. Undoubtedly, as the only blonde in the crowd, her hair stands out like a sore thumb. Here Linda plays with the young pioneers wearing a simple white dress with a jacket in the same tone tied around her waist. She looks lively and natural in the picture. Her matching outfit is still fashionable today. Linda joins a group of elderly people dancing in a square and walking along the river holding hands with small children. She is in a simple singlet wearing the infamous ugly chic slippers. These slippers have recently enjoyed a comeback, proving that fashion is always repeating looks from the past. Casually leaning on a chair, Linda is drinking tea and talking to renowned director Chen Kaji. She is wearing a white dress and a white suit for the occasion. Linda experiences the landscape culture of China. Her white suit provides a perfect contrast to the green mountains and rivers, making the picture clean and clear. The most recent shooting of Vogue in China was in 2011. The colors of this shoot are vibrant, taking the audience out of a dark and dull world. The photo shoot features American supermodel Carly Claus. Carly and the artist Yu Bing explore the artistic world. Her style in these photographs is trendy and fashionable, yet traditional with elements of Chinese calligraphy and characters. And lastly, on to our hashtag story. Everyone knows that being a celebrity isn't always easy. Just ask Chinese model and actress Angela Baby, who's often regarded as the Kim Kardashian of China. And just like the American socialite herself, Angela Baby also faces her own share of nasty rumors. Let's find out more. 
Chinese model actress Angela Baby has recently become a hot topic. Aside from being a beauty icon, her $31 million wedding to fellow actor Hong Xiaoming has caused a massive wave in China's entertainment industry. However, Angela Baby has long been the target of plastic surgery rumors. In a recent bid to prove her natural beauty, the model underwent a medical examination. The results of the examination were then photographed and given to press. In addition, she also posted a picture of herself without any makeup. This comes after an article published by Beijing Beauty Clinic that alleged the young starlet had gone under the knife. The actor sued the clinic, demanding $80,000 in compensation for defamination. And before we go, let's get some details on some upcoming art events here in China. That's all the time we have today. Please stay tuned for our next upcoming episode. In the meantime, you can always log on to our website at www.bon.tv for more information. I'm Shina Akagawa in Beijing. Thanks for watching China Arts, and I'll see you next time.